I don't know what the fuck you guys are thinking. But you don't ever, ever, ever talk about my band again. What's this honest brutality shit anyway? Honest brutality. Abro la puerta sin cuchillo. This is Chris of The Last Band and you're listening to Honest Fucking Brutality. Come on! Everybody, welcome to Honest Brutality. It's Big Sloppy with the Evil Irk and the Butcher. What's up, Ooh, fellas? What's going on, man? Howdy. Hey, uh, I'm kind of excited here today. We're we're talking to somebody from Sweden today. We've got Chris from The Last Band on. How you doing today, Chris? I'm good as fuck because he told me I can curse. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this isn't going to be the last band we're going to talk to. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, we're going to end this shit right here. You're right. Oh. <laughs> yeah sorry guys oh no worries hey don't you fucking apologize on our show all right I'll take it <laughs> so listen uh we've been checking out your band lately and your band by the way i was telling butcher earlier we were i was showing him uh some of your videos and i said if there was ever a band in my wheelhouse that the tones and everything that i love it's the last band you guys have an aggressive kick-ass edge with just a fun atmosphere around it as well your videos prove that for sure it, it's just yeah. fun as hell man it, how, explain your band to the the people who have never heard of you before <laughs> i mean like if you live in the states i think that you can really like appreciate the last band if you live in sweden and you're an uptight asshole that just listen to classic rock you will probably fucking hate us which <laughs> they do so <laughs> when i saw you that you guys contacted us i was like Fuck, if they're from, like, anywhere in Scandinavia, I'm going to fucking just tell them, no, no, thank you. You're going to hate us anyway. Don't even try. Don't waste my time. Take your fucking money. Go back to whatever the fuck you came from. I don't care. But then I saw that you guys were sitting in the States, and I was like, yes, they might get this shit. They might understand, like, what we play, what we do. And it's pretty funny because, that, like, we've never been, like, we haven't been playing in the States, but... It's pretty funny that we get a lot of like positive reactions from the uh, United States and also like the rest of Europe. Uh, but when it comes to Sweden, they're like, they totally don't understand what we're doing. Like they think our videos are like too much or whatever. And like our like mix of music is too weird. And I'm like, you guys try to sound like fucking Led Zeppelin or fucking Rolling Stones, whatever. Like you try to copy your, um, like your idols and. That is just bullshit because you're just a bunch of cover bands, but you say it with your own words, yeah. whatever the fuck, but yeah. it's hard to believe it. And once you like get your friends together, you play something new that nobody ever heard of before. They'd be like, this shit is just weird, man. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's good. So fuck you. <laughs> we just, we just do whatever we want. And like when we, when we do videos, I mean, like you saw the videos. Oh, um, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah we think like we feel that like a lot of bands especially when it comes to like hard rock and metal they take themselves so fucking seriously like they go up to a fucking mountain and they like pray to some dragon and they show, show some fucking sword and shit and like i can't get behind that right like it's right. so it's it's so weird like i'm not in lord of the rings i'm in a band right so <laughs> I wish that was Frodo, but I'm not. Like, yeah, oh my! I'm not, I'm not that. I'm not that short, so I have to like just go with it. Hey, and yeah, we just like to have fun. Yeah, I mean, like you shouldn't take yourself too seriously. I mean, our videos should be like fun to watch. Yeah, that's uh, you address that in the song "Pretty Boys," don't you? Yeah, it's about Stockholm. We fucking hate those guys. <laughs> Damn. Uh, this is awesome. Well, he drops, he, you guys address Nikki Six in that song, amongst other things. Yeah, I mean, like, we, like, I have a lot of friends from Stockholm. My girlfriend is from Stockholm. Like, I mean, like, I totally respect the scene of music, but when it comes to Stockholm, I'm, I'm not sure if you have been there, but no. no. 
I mean, like, it's the capital of Sweden. And when you go there, like, every motherfucker you meet in a rock pub, they have, like, this big hair. They play bass in some band. They try to be Nicky Six. They can't play for shit, but they play bass in some band. And they're about to make it. And they're not signed yet, but wait for it. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, fuck. Can you, can you just, like, let the 80s die and do something else? Wow. For real? No, I thank yeah. you. For, well, this is fresh, it man. Is. I love, thank you so I much. I love how candid you are. I love how straight up you are. The fact of the matter is, is that we've listen to a lot of music out of that region we've talked to bands in that region and it does seem to be there is a lot of very good high level music theory musicianship a lot of technical precision type stuff but it's really refreshing to have a band that comes out that's just like guttural and visceral and down and dirty fun rock and roll yeah i mean like people ask us what we play and i say like you know what People say like metal, they say hardcore, they say hard rock, you know, I don't give a fuck. Like if it's punk or whatever, like we play something that we like to do. And if you want to like put it in some like category or whatever, I don't care. We don't do it. Like we don't say we play this. We just say we play music. I hope you enjoy it. Like we don't care. Well, I'll tell you what I do enjoy. It's your videos. Now let's go back to your first album a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> the video for <laughs> When the Devil Needs a Ride. You're, oh, the fuck? You're, that's, that's an old one. Dude, <laughs> your bass player is getting a dick tattoo. In the middle of this damn video. <laughs> yeah. And all yeah, I could say was, I love this band. They are so much fun. I have a great story about that video. Oh, okay. Yeah. Give it to me. Yes. Yeah. So we, we were having this show on a, on a Saturday. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, the plan was to record a video um, on the, the, the next day, on a Sunday, uh, in my uh, sister's living room. So... <laughs> After the show on Saturday, we were super drunk and we just decided like, hey, fuck it. Let's just go to my sister right now, have an after party, keep partying until the, like, uh, the camera team shows up and just record it. So we did that. So when the camera team showed up like 10 in the morning, we were super shit faced. Like some, some people already passed out. We were like pale and shit. Like, and they were like, they came in there and they told me like, Chris, I thought that you were going to record a drunk video, not be fucked up drunk. Like in, in the morning, we had to call the fire department because we had like a smoke machine indoors. Um, my sister had to repaint the whole room because we had Jagemeister sort of feathers all over the fucking wall. Um, <laughs> yeah, the bass player got a dick on his ass. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. We, yeah. So we, we kept drinking for like 12 hours and like fucked up the apartment. And like we oh. had to call in sick from work and yeah, call the fire department and shit. So that video has a lot of history. Oh, my God. That's well, a great yeah, I, prob I probably still owe people money from that one. <laughs> That's <laughs> fucked up. And that kind of sets a precedent for the different videos you've done. The, your videos are crazy, but they're crazy fun. Yeah, I mean, like, since that was our first video, I was like, shit, you can't go down in lifestyle. I mean, like, we have to keep this up. Oh, yeah. Like, we yeah. have to be the worst band ever to, like, work with on videos. <laughs> <laughs> I, I disagree. I think you're the greatest band ever to work on videos because you guys aren't afraid. When you're pulling dollar bills out of the crack of somebody's ass in a limo, you're onto yeah. something. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? That limo driver, because we called the limo company and everybody, like, it was a Sunday, so nobody was working. So the boss of the company had to do it himself. Oh, God. And he, he, he did not know what, like, what we were supposed to do. We just said, like, you know, we need a limo scene for, like, one hour. Uh, can you do it? So he came. And then we did the ass scene with the dollar. And an, <laughs> an, old, an old couple walked by. And he was like, hey, guys, can you take, can you put the ass back in? Can you put that fucking ass back in? Because his, the, the, comp the company logo was right next to my drum's ass. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, shit, dude, I'm paying for this ass. Just smile, man. <laughs> Oh no, my no. God. was that actually the owner of the company that's driving the limo in the video? No, no, we we oh, have, okay. we, 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 we replaced it with. Well, if you if you if you see the Devil Needs the Right video, you see the guy in the like um uh, the, the bathrobe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the same guy driving the oh, limo. Okay, well, I was gonna say because if it was the owner, he still took that money out of that ass crack without a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, no way, no. Yeah. The owner was like outside the vehicle, just like. Fucking praying or something. I don't know. Like he, <laughs> he totally regret that Sunday. Oh, Dear God, like, why did I bring this limo here? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, when I meet him, I walk up to him with, like, only underwear and boots. Yeah, and, like, right. A big fur furry jacket and, a like, a briefcase full of, like, what's supposed to be cocaine. Yeah. And he's like, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> that so, song, yeah, that, by the way, that song, White Powder, is phenomenal i love that song buddy 
you know, we had so much, oh, thank you. We had so much problem, uh, like announcing that song on the last European tour because, you know, you're up on stage and you're like, in England, it's okay. And also like in the States, I guess. But when you talk to like German people or fucking Italians and shit, mm-hmm. when I say I'm going to play a song called White Powder, do you know what they hear? White Power? Yeah. Oh, so like, I was wondering about oh, that. Oh, wow. I yeah. Didn't, yeah. So like, uh, we have to like, some shows I didn't like even announce. I just like, just said like, you know what? This song is about people that love having fun. Uh, don't do drugs, but this is about drugs. And they were just like, play it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, the thing that song it seems to me like there's a little bit of social commentary in there too, not just about drugs and having fun. Am I mistaken? No, you're totally right. I mean, like that song is actually about not taking drugs, but how people get when they take them. Like, I mean, like suddenly you think that you're like this big boss and everything is like going your way and shit, but it's just like um uh what do you call it? What's the word for it? An illusion. Um, yeah, an illusion. Yeah, like I mean like uh, obviously, like if you if you're sober, you meet somebody that's totally coked up. Uh, that guy is not cool to be with. That guy is a fucking <laughs> idiot. <laughs> but in that guy's world, he's, he's the fucking king. He's, he's cool the master of the shit. universe. Yeah, yeah, right. He's cool as shit. He's talking to everybody. Everybody wants to fuck him. He has all this money. Like ev- everything is great for like two two more hours. <laughs> that song is about like having a good time for two hours and then just like go suicidal. Oh, my God. So, yeah, it's pretty dark. <laughs> you guys have this imagery with the videos, uh, your your social media presence. And let us let me take it down this road. Your artwork, your album art and everything has a certain imagery. And I'm curious about the album art for this last album with the rhino on the building. I get the King Kong reference, but I'm really yeah. kind of curious as to what's going on there. Why the rhino? Uh, like... Every album, like we released two albums, and both of the covers is like images of Gothenburg in a chaotic, disastrous way when mm-hmm. like animals taking over. Right. So the first album was Rats of Gothenburg. It was like rats and crows all over a bridge here. We have the, like the train uh, broken down and shit. And mm-hmm. the next album, like we went back to ourselves and like, how do we feel? Like, how do we feel against other bands in Gothenburg or like Stockholm, the whole scene in Sweden? Like, they don't get our music. How, wh- how do we feel about it? And I'm like, I feel like a fucking rhino climbing up that building in Gothenburg and just like fucking it up, taking that big statue and just shove it into the building and just screaming like, fuck you, we're here now. Just <laughs> awesome. <laughs> deal deal with, with it. it. I, love, <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. So we were like, let's, you, let's just do like the King Kong shit. That's because so King Kong awesome. doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> One of those metal things I've heard all week. Right? Yeah, that that is fucking rock and roll. That is metal right there. Yeah, it's just like so. It's pure feeling. Like I said, like you know, if we like if we make it big with this album, next next time I'm gonna be a lion walking into New York City and just fuck it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you, you say that. What kind of response are you getting from the album? Because I I found this album I. I actually stumbled across the White Powder video about, I don't know, a month and a half, two months ago. Yeah, we played it and on we played it on show. our radio show. Yeah. And I was like, oh, oh, cool, oh my God, these guys are incredible. And to me, it's amazing that you guys aren't a household name yet because the, so- the whole damn album is fucking incredible, bro. Thank you so much. I mean, like, in we released it like right before we went on tour with Avatar, supporting yeah. those guys. Mm-hmm. And um, the response we got like uh, in Europe was great. And the album really took off after that. And we know we have some fans in the States as well. but And we got some radio plays. And it's amazing, actually, because when they play us like here in like, Sweden or whatever, like we don't get that much response from it. But when we get radio plays in the States, we notice immediately because we get emails and like they get uh, like direct messages on instagram and on facebook like people get in touch with us saying like hey i just heard that song on the radio you guys are fucking amazing are you coming to the states and like the response has been so good uh so, you're welcome yeah thank you thank you so much it means a lot and i mean like i just fucking we are that. actually we are actually aiming to tour the states because we feel like that we feel like your scene is like more or like the audience is more like open minded. Yeah. And I think that we have a place there because I don't know, Sweden is just too uptight. I don't know what the fuck they want here. Well, I don't know. If, to, I don't know if it's a matter of being open minded, but I think that your sound will definitely sell over here and work over here yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we think so as well. Yeah. But you know, it's a hard market to get into. I mean, like you have to have to have like radio channels and like people like you, you know, calling and doing the podcast and like you need that kind of support to like really like, you know, 
get people to like listen to you for real. Yeah. So is your album self produced or did you? Are you guys aren't signed? Are you? Yeah, we're signed. We're signed. You are. Okay. Who are you with? Yeah. Uh, like the record label is called Gain here in. They are like an under label to uh, Sony Music. Sony. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure on that. Um, I'm wondering why you guys are they not wanting to push you guys heavy in the U.S. yet, or what's going on with them? What's their angle here? I like they, they do, but it's all about money, and like they think that if the more records we sell, the more they can like you know um, push us out and stuff. So it's like back and forth, and they also like they say like you know we're a record label, we're not like we're not like uh, a publishing uh, or something like that. So they can only do as much. I mean, like they do like they got some radio channels to play us but it's also hard for them because they're just a record label like it's not their like primary work to do that like right. they just they just like distribute records that's what they do right gotcha i call them all the time and like just try to make like make them do more but and they <laughs> tell me like you know chris we hear you we're trying but we can't do this and then i call the next day again and like you know it's back and forth all the time <laughs> I'll bring some white powder over. <laughs> oh, perfect. <laughs> that might speed up the conversation. Hey, I, I see you guys are getting ready. In the, it looks like the fall, you're going to tour pretty hard. And I did notice in the video for The Hunt, there's a van in there that says the last yeah. band. on. Is that your guys' touring van or is that just a prop for the video? No, no, it's our van. That's yeah, what I thought. Like, yeah, right now we're not touring it because it's like it's causing a lot of problems. Like every time I use it, they don't want to start. And <laughs> that sounds like every I single mean, like, band's van. Ever. Yeah, <laughs> it it does start, but when I get to the location, I want like I can't get away from there anymore. Like I have to live there for two weeks, and it's becoming a problem. So. Okay, well, this is something we ask of every band that has their own vehicle. Do you have a name for your van? I just no, I just like many different curse words but i still love it so <laughs> cunt maybe <laughs> the rolling cunt oh my god don't you know you're supposed to sweet talk to your vehicle that's how you get them to start maybe that's the maybe problem. he is <laughs> I, I i mean like i filled her up i gave her some new fucking tires she still gives me bullshit i mean i'm not made out of money like you like, sure you're not married to this thing <laughs> Um, I'm not sure anymore. Like, <laughs> shit happens. I got drunk. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I want to go back to something. You guys won a uh, a contest through Jägermeister a few ba years back when you were just getting going, and you got to open the uh, was it the Sweden Rock Festival? Yeah, and also Metal Town. Yeah, and you guys decided, hey, we're gonna go out on the stage dressed as Power Rangers. Yeah. What in the idea. hell were you thinking? Where where'd that come from? I, I, you know, I kind of knew that when we won that contest, we were pretty new as a band and we were not sounding that good. And we kind of won with like all of the attitude. Like we were a great live band, but um, that was it. Like we didn't have the songs and shit. We just have the attitude and like the right mindset. So we won that contest and I felt like, okay, so we're going to open up Sweden's biggest rock festival. Like with bands like it's fucking Kiss and Aerosmith and shit playing. And I'm like, you know what? Nobody's going to give a fuck about us. Nobody's going to care. If we just go up there like in black jeans and some leather jacket or whatever, people are just going to walk by. But if we go up as fucking Power Rangers, they're going to see us from like all the way to the fucking camp. <laughs> there. They're going to be like, great. they're going to be like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is happening over there? And I was right. I mean, like a lot of people came just to like record and spread it all over just like because it was so fucked up and also <laughs> i accidentally ordered a mask without a mouth so <laughs> when i yeah so when i sang i was playing guitar back then so when i sang the mask got up into my eyes so i couldn't see and like i couldn't see what i was playing and i couldn't fucking see the microphones like after one <laughs> song i had to like get rid of the mask oh god too yeah much. too funny that's great marketing it was ge that was genius by the way yeah, like when we met, we met like other bands, like on the next festival in Metal Town, and they were like, "The last band, aren't you those guys that always plays in fucked up costumes?" And I'm like, "No, we did it once, but I guess the word got around." So that was good. <laughs> well, it's even in one of your videos too. Well, I think. It, yeah, so you're you're obviously creative with your marketing, uh, and your you know um, outward appearance. I noticed on your social media you had a post about your t-shirts costing too much and someone suggesting you do something else and you were trying to come up with ideas like pocket knives or dog penis merch is that yeah is that yeah, in the works definitely. uh 
I'm finding it harder than I thought collecting dog penises <laughs> for a reasonable price. <laughs> But we live so close to Russia, so pocket knives should be easy enough to get. <laughs> oh, oh my shit. god, too funny. So I think it's I think it's happening. Yeah, I'm uh, like we were talking about having one merch since we're the last band, just having the last merch on each show. Like you can have only buy one of each. Right. So <laughs> one penis. <laughs> at every show should like that should be doable i mean like if i'm playing like in dublin shouldn't be that hard to get a dog's penis in dublin I mean, they should serve everything <laughs> they serve that with potatoes over there for god's sake fucking ira i mean they should like have dog penises piled up from the war <laughs> <laughs> jesus well i'm just wondering if you're gonna if you're gonna run into problems trying to sell pocket knives at festivals i just thought i'd throw that out there you know <laughs> It's all about how you like disguise them. Like if we would tell the guards that it's just lighters, we should be fine. <laughs> I think so. There's a mass stabbing in the mosh pit. Thanks, last man. Band. Too much fun. <laughs> too much fun. So okay, so I gotta ask. It's you. also good for the, it's also good for the sport to lose some fans at each show. I think. <laughs> I mean, it makes you work harder. It sounds like a very death clocky thing to do. Oh uh, right. Oh my god. I got to ask you, we don't, I don't like to ask the question, like, where did the name come from for the band? I really don't like the question. But in your case, I'm, I'm definitely curious, got to know, why the last band? That's pretty funny, actually, because um, when I started this band, I was just like trying out as a vocalist for different bands here in Gothenburg. And whenever I came, they told me to like, hey, can you sing like this or can you sing like that? And, you know, we play Guns N' Roses style and we like, we try to be Aerosmith and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, I need something new. And my, like, the last audition I went to, uh, the drummer kept telling me, like, hey, can you sing more like this? And I'm like, no, you know what? I can't because this is my voice. What are you looking for? And he says some random band. And then we just play the song and he stopped me again. And I'm like, dude, what the fuck? So what are you playing on the drums? And he said, I'm playing ACDC. And I'm like, what the fuck is playing ACDC on drum? Like you can't, if you play drums, you play drums in a different way, but you don't, you can't just say like, I'm playing ACDC. Right. That's not a way of, that's not a way of playing drums. So I left and I'm like, fuck this shit. I'm starting my own band. It's going to be my <laughs> last fucking band. It's the last fucking band. Then I'm out. Then I'm doing like, I'm going to be like a fucking, I don't know, um, telephone salesman or whatever. Like I fuck <laughs> this shit. Like fuck every rocker in this town. I'm going to create my own band. The last band, if that doesn't work. Fuck this shit. So, so so how did you find these knuckleheads you're hanging out with? Because I've seen the videos, and they seem like an absolute blast to hang out with backstage. And you guys all seem to be like-minded. You're all having a good time and creating unique music. How did you find them in that that area? I mean, like, first, I, um, I met up with some friends at a rock bar, and I told them my idea and how I felt about the whole music scene. And... I picked out some members and they were all in different bands and said to me, like, you know what? We can do this like once a week, but we're not going to quit our bands. And I told them, like, you know what? Let's see about that. You're going to quit your fucking bands. But let's start off with rehearsing and see what happens. <laughs> and then we, then, we, then we won the contest and everybody quit their bands, as I told them. <laughs> and then our guitar player, like, he got cold feet after Metal Town. And, you know, he was in love with this girl who now dumped him. I don't, I don't know, but... <laughs> so he called he he called me like you know chris i can't do this anymore and i'm like okay so why are you getting married or like what the fuck and he was like nah i don't feel like it okay so i've known this guy for like 15 years all he does is playing guitar and suddenly he doesn't feel like it after we won this contest and play festivals no way right. but either way he dropped out and alex joined the band and i've known alex since i was one year old so we go way back hmm. and yeah, we took it from there. And after like the first record or like before we released the first record, we kicked our drummer because he always, he were all, always like finding excuses not to rehearse. Like, like we, we rehearsed every Sunday before and he could say to us like, you know what, can we like start off 10 in the morning and be done by 12 because I have to help my dad with his boat. <laughs> and I'm like, did I just hear that shit? <laughs> I, I come home. I come home from the pub eight in the morning, and I should rehearse with you ten in the morning because your dad have a fucking boat. My dad don't have a fucking boat. My mom doesn't have a fucking boat. We play music so we can buy a fucking boat. <laughs> I'm not getting rich while he's being on his fucking boat. Right? Not happening. Yeah. Fuck that boat. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> and play ACDC. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah go. Yeah. Go play ACDC on your fucking boat. I don't care. <laughs> 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 oh, Fuck. Hey, Chris. But now, see- it's a, now it's a fun game. Now yeah. it's a fun game. <laughs> I see you guys are, are shaping up for a tour here in the fall with uh, Fozzie and Hardcore Superstar. How'd you land that gig? Uh, I called them like every day until I said yes. <laughs> no, but <laughs> damn, <laughs> All, almost. I know the guys in Hardcore Superstar. We've been talking about touring uh, for a while, and now we're on the same record label, so it made sense. And I found out there was like a chance to get an opening spot, so I kept calling and. The record label told us, like, you know what? You can do it. But then you have to, like, record some new songs and release a single. I'm like, you know, we're on it. No problem. We just, like, we started right before you told us. So no worries. Hmm. And we, we got the tour after, like, 25 phone calls and some crying. <laughs> I don't know. But we got it. So, yeah, we're, we're pretty excited because we toured those countries, like, almost the same cities one year ago. And we have a lot of fans there, like, keep requesting us. So it's really good for us that we come back now. So let me understand this. You guys are recording some new stuff right now for a new single? Yeah, we're going to um, go into the studio in August and record some songs. And we're going to record a video in September and release it before the tour. So, yeah, we have some mm. new stuff coming out pretty soon. Badass. Well, I know where you can debut that new music, my friend. Uh, in your podcast? Uh, on our radio show. That would be awesome. We would love to do that. Well, damn right. We're going to do that. You give me the exclusive, and we'll kick ass for you, brother. Definitely. Let's do it. All yes. right. All right. I Write mean, that like... down. He said yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I said I, yes. This I, is being recorded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have nothing I have nothing to hide. I'm my own manager, and I don't, I don't even like the Swedish radio station, so I'm up for it. Like, Let's let's do it. Bomb we'll, ass. we'll blow you up, brother. Yeah. We'll blow you up. I swear to God. So, Chris, you, you're... Uh, Thanks again. You're a fucking madman. I'm loving having you on the show. <laughs> but I got to yeah. ask you, so uh, you're growing up, you're a young Chris. Were you always musically inclined? Is this something you found later in life? Is What's what's the deal with you? I've always been into music, but I was also like kind of a retard when I was a kid. <laughs> so I, I started off with drums. I played drums like in a punk band. Yeah. And then I... Uh, I listen a lot to like Rich Gangster Machine and Cypress Hill and Public Enemy. So oh, wow. like after like after some years of drumming, I felt like you know what, I'm gonna buy a fucking turntable and start scratching old vinyls, huh. which was a stupid idea because I was living um, in a part of the city where like if you weren't a skinhead, you were a skateboarder, and like nobody listened to hip hop. And for me, buying a turntable, it was like me big, buying a fucking spaceship. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so. I sold my drums that wasn't even paid for yet by my dad and I sold them without him knowing it. So I got like, I got ripped off as shit because I was like 12 years old. Yeah. Uh, I bought a turntable, started scratching and then I got rid of the turntable. You know what I bought? Afraid to, a I bought a, <laughs> I, I, I bought a parrot because <laughs> I've, yeah, I felt that, you know what? It would be cool to be a pirate for a year. So I bought a parrot. <laughs> and then and then my si- my sister got allergic, so I have to give it away. <laughs> so I went from drums to turntable to a fucking parrot to no money. <laughs> oh my god. That's why I'm, that's why I'm still pissed off. Oh. That's why we're still pissed oh, off. Man. That's why your music's so Wait, angry, huh? I see it. I see it. The next the next EP or the next album cover is gonna be a giant parrot taking over the city yeah <laughs> no a parrot with a, my dick in his mouth because <laughs> he almost killed my sister this fucking <laughs> asshole and it took my money and left <laughs> oh, oh fuck. Hey, Chris I'm gonna tell you right now that's one of the top three stories we've ever heard on any of our <laughs> conversations <laughs> uh, alright oh, awesome I'm, fucking... I'm glad you feel that way oh, oh, it's not that god. awesome for me but I'm, I'm trying to get over it I'm trying, uh, I'm trying hard I'm fucking crying over my here my god my god <laughs> yeah every time my dad gets drunk he tells that story to me I'm like you know what <laughs> if we weren't related I would stab you in the fucking face <laughs> Talk about the parrot, man. Uh, Holy Holy shit, shit, man. Uh, Too good. Fuck, man. Too good. Stone Cold Killer. (laughs) Yeah, my dad's an asshole, so he doesn't care. (laughs) (laughs) So, okay, so real quick, going back to the stuff that you're recording, are you just doing a couple of singles to kind of spike interest before you go out on the tour? Are you doing a full EP, a full LP? What are you doing? 
we're going to record as many songs as we have, like, have time to do. We have one week in the studio. And we're going to focus on one song first and just, like, just, like, see how, how much we can record. But the main focus is one single. And if we record, we record more songs, we're going to release another single later. And everything will be on the album, which we probably will release uh, next spring, I think, like March or April or something. So we're working hard on the next album like, nice. already. Gotcha. And you, you currently have two releases that are available for the public consumption. Uh, the, yeah, the rats of Gothenburg and the latest the offering, fall. Yeah, the fall, the fall. Yeah, and the fall is more like if you like the fall, you're gonna like what we do right now. And like rats of Gothenburg was like with the old lineup, and we did not like we couldn't really get behind that record. So like three months after it was released, me and Alex just decided like you know what, fuck this, let's just go back to the rehearsal studio. No producer, nobody like saying shit, like just us doing our thing. Nobody can hear it and just go to the studio and see what happens. So we like we did the fall in like three or four months mm-hmm. and just went into the studio with no producer, no like no record label, nothing, and just did it. And we got like signed the fucking day after it was done. Nice, that's awesome. Nice, yeah. I like that because you're doing what you want to do. Yeah, we felt like you know what the first album we like we spent a lot of money and a lot of time, and so it was like a really hard decision to make. But we felt like I mean like if we can't like get behind it, if we don't get that album, how the fuck should we sell it? I mean like I can't go up on stage and perform something that I don't even understand. I can't do that. So sure. fuck the money, fuck the time we spent. Let's just like redo it, like reset the whole time. Like Th- that's badass. We don't care. No, I dig that. Yeah. In fact, you know that leads me to to this if you were to be able to go back and talk to your young self as you were getting started in the music industry what advice would you give yourself don't get the fucking parrots (laughs) 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 Uh, I, i would totally i would probably tell myself to like you know keep the drums keep practicing don't care about all the partying and shit like i went to so many parties i got drunk so many times like it's actually worth skipping out on a party and just like stay in the rehearsal studio and like keep doing that shit because it's going to pay off. Yeah. Right. right. So like kids today, they shouldn't be afraid that like they are missing out because you don't miss anything. People partying when they're 18, they are fucking stupid. You don't miss out on anything. Like you, you, you won't get late anyway. Just keep banging your fucking drums. <laughs> no, it's good better. Point. Yeah. Good point. I agree. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. Awesome, man. I think, I think it goes like the same with like with everything. Like if you want to study, whatever, just like do it. You can party later. No rush. Yeah. It, yeah. That's, that's yeah. a good point. Now I wanted to ask you too. We talked a little bit about you coming to the States and uh, if that were potentially to happen, is there any one act that you would love to share the stage with more than any other? Like right now, if I could like support one band, it would be like Prophets of Rage because of course I'm a Rage Against the Machine fan. I'm a Cypress Hill fan, a Public Enemy fan. Like right now they have a band together. It's like my fucking childhood dream coming through. So right. Yeah. I yeah. would say, I would say Prophets of Rage. It would, it would also like make sense with the new songs we're making because like it's kind of like Rage Against the Machine vibe on like some of them and. Um, yeah, I would say if one band, I would say death band. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, I saw you guys do a live video of, uh, bulls on parade. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. We did that one. Yeah. Yeah. And you killed it. Actually, I was actually kind of interested in the fact that you kind of have a Zach De La Roca, uh, flair when you want to. Yeah. People keep telling me and I've been like, I've been hearing that shit since I was like, a kid because when I was a kid I sang along to all the fucking albums by Rich Against the Machine so I kind of developed that kind of rapping and that kind of like how he like uh, how he pr- how he pronounces stuff and shit like when I do that kind of music so right. I kind of like just grew up with it and it like it stuck on me so I don't do it on purpose but I've, I've heard it from a lot of people that I have that kind of like feeling when I do it ah, I, I think that's a huge compliment because I think that he's He's like one of the fucking greatest frontmen ever. Like, I love that guy. Yeah, he definitely had a lot going on there, and it, it would be great to see him back on the scene doing, you know, a lot more active stuff. Yeah, yeah, he totally should. I mean, he's too talented to just, like, I don't know what he does, rapping at clubs or whatever. Like, he's too, like, the world needs that guy, I think. Man, you have been such a great guest. Thank you so much for coming on and entertaining us and being so much fun. We really appreciate you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you for calling. I had a great time. This was the, probably the best interview I've ever done. Is there anything that we didn't talk about today that you wanted to? Is there anything we missed? You know, 
Not really, because we're not that interesting. Like, if you like music and if you like to have <laughs> fun, differ, sir. <laughs> if you like to have fun and if you like to see some fucked up shit, you should just like listen to Last Band and go to the shows and keep supporting. Because I mean, like, the bigger we get, the bigger the party's gonna get, and we're gonna do more fucked up stuff. Like, <laughs> this is just the beginning. So that's scary. Support the mayhem. Support the fucking mayhem. <laughs> Love it. We're 100% behind you. We're going to make sure that we push you as hard as we can. And for the listening audience, how do they find you? How do they find your music? Uh, where, where do they reach out to you at? I would say Spotify, but I just found out. I was in New York a couple of weeks ago, and I found out that we're also on uh, Google Play. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Google Play, iTunes, uh, Spotify. I don't know. I mean, like, you don't have to buy the album. We don't make any money out of, out of it anyway. So just stream it, go to the show, buy a fucking t shirt or a dog penis, and <laughs> we can come back. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it, man. All right, man. Yeah. Thanks again so much. And thank you for having me. I had a blast. How much fun was that guy? Holy God. Yeah. Parrot talk, baby. <laughs> you know, we, we say that, it seems like at the end of every conversation, but. Right. That that was <laughs> so us, much fun. He had us rolling the whole time. Yeah. I don't know if we actually... Did we actually ask him any questions? Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> I feel like I w went on a journey with that guy, and it was a fun freaking journey. I learned so much yeah. uh, about allergies and parrots and, and I, I, you Stockholm. Know, <laughs> you know, his attitude is absolutely rock and roll. That is absolutely the, the metal mentality that got a lot of these big acts where they're at mm -hmm. in, in eventuality because they, you know, it's very punk rock. You know, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I'm going to do it. And his attitude is, this is the last band I'm ever going to start. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we're calling the band, for God's sake. Yeah. And I just, I loved it. I love everything about that guy. He was just a ton of fun, man. I, I wish I could be that much fun. <laughs> I, I don't, we yeah. Do too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's a, a life skill that you just learn. I think you just come, you just it, are, yeah, you're born yeah. with that. Yeah, yeah. Well, what a great guy. What a great guest and what an amazing band. Killer band. Get out there, check these Killer. guys out. Go over, like their page, tell them we sent you. That's important. We want them to know that we are helping them see some love, especially from the States, because we're bringing you the bands you didn't even know you needed to hear. That's what we do here at Honest Brutality. Check us out at honestbrutality.com. Check us out at all of our socials, Facebook, Instagram, the Twitter. We're all over the place. You can also call us, 530-962-0411. Tell me all about how you enjoyed White Powder. With the last band. <laughs> <laughs> Check out our shows on Rock Rage Radio. We're on on Saturdays and we're on on Tuesdays. Go to our website, find the times. Go to our Facebook, find the times. Come over, say hi. We do live chats, things of that nature. And we've been doing a little fun thing on Friday nights. We're doing live game show nights on Facebook Live. We may expand that some more. And um, we're also looking for street team members. If you're interested, reach out to us. Uh, hit us up at one of our respective emails. It's all honestbrutality.com at the end. So you can... Evil Irk, The Butcher, Big Sloppy. You can reach out to us and we will be there to answer your questions and find street team members to help us propagate what is the Honest Brutality family. In the meantime, take care of yourselves, be good people, and most importantly, stay metal! Stay metal, right? <laughs> <laughs> check, out, check out some white powder. Abro la puerta sin cuchillo. Get ready for the rush I will feel the heat You came to win
Okay, so the next song is called The Hunt. Um, it's a pretty fun song because we recorded it with um, different lyrics and it totally sucked. So we're going to throw it away. And then I was on my way to get a tattoo and I saw all the ugly people on the train. And I, I was thinking, shit, everybody does whatever it takes to get some money. So with us saying, come on, skinny bitches, get your ass on the plate. It's about like you do everything for that tiny fucking piece of Fame, that tiny piece of like your like your place in the spotlight. It's all about that. So the hunt is on for everybody, and it's a fair game.
Brutality!